whatever the page on we are in our notes we're on page five wow already we're on page five holy cats we're moving along real quick okay so today we're looking at six two and we're working with properties of parallelograms okay so six two properties we're working with the definition of parallelogram opposite sides well are parallel that's the definition of parallelogram then we're going to look at opposite sides being congruent consecutive angles are supplementary opposite angles are congruent diagonals bisect each other we just kind of went through that because we made a correction to our notes okay and then we're going to talk about a transversal okay does that make sense where we're going and what we're doing all right, so we have direction. Today's objective is to use relationships among sides, angles, and diagonals in parallelograms. So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Well, you know, some of the things we're going to talk about today really stem from the idea of consecutive interior and same side interior angles. And people are like, boom, that's from chapter three. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, it's back. And all these things, when I got parallelograms, if I got a transversal coming across and these are parallel, those two angles are same side interiors, right? Totally going to come back on us. We're going to be looking at stuff, checking things out, making relationships, hopefully making connections. So it's totally rock solid. But this first thing is the definition of parallelograms, opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Now, the second thing, theorem 6.8, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. The opposite sides are the same measure. So I'm going to have problems like problem one. Now, when I read problem one, I underlined DG and I highlighted it. I underlined EF and highlighted it. Do you know that DG and EF are opposite sides? And according to what I just read, they're congruent and therefore equal, okay? So, with that said, get your solve on and substitute and get her going, go. Now, we substitute it in, I'm going to subtract 2x, and I'm going to, you know, eventually, after I add my 3, and I'm going to find out that x is 5. Now, are you doing okay? Are there any questions? Anybody have a concern that I didn't touch d, e, or g, f? I want to talk about those two. They're over there. They're hanging out in the room. We've got to talk about the elephant in the room, right? They're like, what about? Come on, boom, we're right here. And everybody else is thinking, yeah, what about those guys? Do they have a relationship that has the same variable as D, G, and E, F in this very same diagram and problem? They have the same relationship, I mean, similar relationship, I should say, and they're using the same variable. When I set stuff up to solve for a variable in the same problem, okay, must be the same problem, if I have other relationships in which I could have solved for the variable, I can set those up as well, but I should get exactly the same answer. So you could have solved for both, but I'm gonna be honest with you, you should be finding the same answer. If you're not, I've incorrectly written the question or <laughs> you're solving it wrong. Okay, it's so one of those two, because if it's the same variable in the same problem, it should be the same answer, okay, when we set up the relationships correctly to be solved. Okay, so knowing that, we're going on to our next thing. So I have, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. 
Now, consecutive angles, same side interiors. Bloom kind of marked that right at the beginning of this because we've got opposite sides are parallel and same side interior angles are supplementary. Crazy that we're doing that from chapter three, but keep that in mind as we're going through. So we have these relationships. Now, I've got A and B can be added together to be 180, B and C, C and D, D and A. All those combinations add together to be 180 degrees because opposite sides of parallelogram are parallel. And then the ones that we're not talking about are our transversals. Crazy, huh? Okay, so that's where this is coming from. Bless you. Um, so when we're looking at this, I'm looking at A. What do you think the value of x is? Go ahead and answer. Don't be shy. 120. Oh, nice job. So here's the deal. I set this up. 60 plus x is equal to 180 to show how I'm thinking. Okay? Or you could have said x is equal to 180 minus 60. Either way, you're showing the greater what you're doing, and you show them your answer because that's what we're here for. Okay? So we got the relationship. We got the answer. We get to move on. Your turn, do B and C, please. Okay, do B and C. Same relationship, just the practice. Just the practice. In B, consecutive angles are supplementary. So x plus 154 must be 180. And I subtract, and I get myself a 26. Okay? Are there questions about my setup for B? We're doing okay? All right? In C, now, as soon as I start putting in letters, people start going, oh, they must be equal. They're not. We're still doing the same problem. Think about what we're doing. We are talking about a parallelogram. We have consecutive angles. Consecutive angles means if I start on one angle and work my way around the figure, the next angle is consecutive to it, and the relationship is that they add together to be 180 degrees. So that's what I'm doing. I'm adding together to make them 180. So I've got 8x plus 3x, excuse me, 8s plus 3s, okay, which is 11s, and 5 and 10, which is 15. So I combine like terms, and I subtract my 15, so I get 11s equals 65, 165. Now I just divide by 11, right? So I've got S is 15, and I'm golden. I could continue going on and answer all sorts of other things that the instructor or the person writing the test might want me to tell them about this answer now. Now, we've done parallelograms. The definition of opposite sides are parallel. We talked about that in parallelograms, opposite sides are congruent. We've also talked about consecutive angles are supplementary. Now we're going to talk about opposite angles are congruent. So opposite angles are congruent. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So we're going to find the value of A in each parallelogram. This idea stems from congruent supplements. Okay? We talked about them, and people are like a little wishy-washy about them because you're like, boom, where are you coming from this congruent supplements thing? Here's the deal. If I tell you that A and B, angle A and B, are supplementary, Right? And we just learned last that consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. And then I say, hey, you know, I know B and C are also supplementary. Because once again, we just learned that consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. Well, I have two angles supplementary to the same angle. Congruent supplement states, if you have two angles supplementary to the same angle, those two angles are congruent, okay? So I'm looking at angle A and angle C being congruent to each other by congruent supplements, okay? Because they're supplementary to the same angle, so therefore they must be equal and, they're, and finally congruent to each other. So 
I'm using that idea, and some people just look at, well, bloom, it's just on the diagonals. If it's like this and this, those are said equal to each other. I go, yep, basically that's what the theorem is stating. But the idea of congruent supplements comes from, you know, extends to that and allows us to recognize that's just what I can do. So now I just set that up and I solve. Okay, so you guys finish A and go ahead to B. Finish A and go ahead to B. Okay, you ready? I got 10 and A. B should be 114 equals 3A, right? Totally fine, rock solid, and we divide by 3 and we get 38. Yes! Right? Totally everybody's like fist pumping, little, little end zone dance parties going on, right? So now, when we're looking at this and see, have I changed it? No, oh, still same relationship. We set those angles equal to each other when they're across from each other. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. Add 5, and A is 15. Now, to quote a famous American, how you doing? Yes, Joey Tribbiani. But it's the Tribbiani moment. I need you guys to... Rate yourself, one, two, three, or four, and see, hey, what do you, what, what do you understand in today? Okay, what are you getting? If you're getting it in right now, and you're like, boom, get out of the way, I want to teach this, that's a four. If you're just about, you can do this without any help, that's a three. Two, you got some questions about it, and two, one, you're like, hey, dude, you're doing something mathematical. That's cool. <laughs> I have no other idea of what it is. Just go ahead, rate yourself, and we're going to pretend it's like the wave. As I walk by your row, just like rate yourself as you're going through so I get an idea. Okay, so go ahead. All right, you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, cool, cool. Okay, I love it. Oh, all right. Hey, don't don't use that finger. Okay. Um, okay. All right. All right. Thank you, you guys. All right. But so here's the thing. As we're going through, we got to keep in mind, just like chapter five, this stuff is property oriented. It's I have a definition. We apply the definition to set up a relationship to solve an algebra land. So we got to make sure we're comfortable with recognizing them out of the diagram. We're comfortable with seeing them. But more importantly, we got to be able to tell if it's a parallelogram based on markings and be able to recognize a parallelogram if they just tell us. And then be able to recall the fact that if it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent if it's a parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. If it's a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. If it's a parallelogram, the next thing, and we fix this at the beginning, diagonals bisect each other. So now, this diagonals bisects each other. We fixed this earlier. Uh, a lot of students didn't have this in their stuff because somebody put in the wrong uh, uh, picture. If your picture looks like this, it's been fixed, and congratulations, you got lucky. Okay, in theorem 6.6, six, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other, which means they're cutting each other in half. Okay, so that's why I got BE and DE equal, and I got ACE and CE equal. Okay, and therefore congruent, or congruent and therefore equal, I should say. But you have to have some understanding of what's being talked about. You have to recognize what actually is equal to each other and what isn't based on my given I provide you. Because I will give you superfluous information. Okay, it's a really big word. You guys know what superfluous is? I will give you junk. Okay, superfluous, okay, superfluous information, junk. Why did I cross out 3D? Check it out. Yep, Mr. Trenton. There's nothing for it to be equal to. It's, it's just there. Nice job, okay. The other things are pointing to parts of the same diagonal, 
So those are going to be used. So I'm going to get after it, and I got 2d plus 1 equals d plus 3. Okay, so now once you do the setup, we're in algebra land. Go ahead. Once you do the setup, you're in algebra land. Go ahead and solve. Solve those things on, and after you finish the first one, do the second one. Okay, if you got questions as I'm walking by, I will repeat your question so the students at home can hear it, and I'll answer it. Okay? We doing okay? Nice job on that test. Now remember, all this stuff is about your experience with it. The better your experience, the more often you experience these problems, the easier it becomes. So part of this is going over your notes after you're done because we now have the right answers. Go over it with a blank piece of paper, two or three sheets thick so you can't see through it. Okay, And go ahead and give a try on setting up these so you can be more successful. So in the B, I'm looking at this, and I've got 2H plus 2, 2H, and H plus 5. I am discerning that these two are the important ones. This is junk. Okay, So now, boom, and then boom. Are you okay with that? Feeling all right? Are there any questions? Now, the number one mistake is when students start worrying about rushing and they grab the wrong stuff. So pay attention to significant pieces of information. We need pieces, well, information on parts of the diagonals to make this one work. Okay, and this is junk, this one. So I pop that in, I get that going. And you guys all have these done, so I'm just catching up. Are you okay with that, with J's 11? Now, we're almost done. we got about five minutes. Some people are like, geez, he's got like 12 pages today. What's up with that? Okay. Um, this is kind of a cool property to recognize. If three or more parallel lines cut off concurrent, excuse me, congruent segments, <laughs> cut off congruent segments. Yeah, it's, I'm sorry. It's a Chapter 5 nightmare. I've cut off congruent segments on one transversal. Then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. And people are like, what? So if I got three parallel lines, okay, or more, okay, it could be a bunch of them, bless you. I'm talking here, they're telling me here that GH, HI, IJ are congruent. So GH, HI, IJ are all 5.75, 5.75, because I was told that they're equal, because of those being equal, and I have lines parallel, okay, no matter how close those lines are, okay, because those lines, when they're parallel, they didn't have to be you know, a certain distance away, I don't think. If three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments, well, the segments have to be congruent. If they're congruent, then every one of the transversals that I draw in here, every one will have congruent spacing, okay? So if those segments weren't, then I can't, okay? So now, keep in mind, if I'm looking at me get rid of the reds here because I want to use red gosh darn it there we go so now if I use AF F what letter is that FI and IK IK is 6.5 so FI is 6.5 and AF is 6.5 does that make sense? The greens are all the same measure. Okay? And I know that EB, BC, and CD will all be the same measure. They'll all be 5 because I am told that BC is 5. So with that information, can you come up with the lengths AE, AF, CD, BD, AK, and G, 
J, please do so. I'm just going to write things in just to make sure you see them. Now, these parallel lines have to be the same spacing apart. They have to be for this to work, having that transversal come across. But if they are, and that transversal comes across, any transversal, any transversal that I drop across those very same parallel lines, the spacing between each intersection is going to be the same. Okay. So I should be able to look at EB and go, well, EB is 5. And AF, well, that's 6.5. CD is talking about 5. So I should be able to pop those off, no problem. Okay. Now, looking at BD, I'm talking about B to D. Well, that's 5 plus 5, which is 10. And AK, A to K is 6.5 plus 6.5 plus 6.5 is 13 plus 6.5, which is 19.5. Okay, and GJ, as I'm looking at that, I'm, ooh, that's 5.75, 5.75, 5.75, that's 15, and then 3, that's 150, 225, so 17.25 as we go through, all right? So are there any questions about where I got those numbers, how I added those things up, or anything? Okay, so now I got one problem left. And before I get there, I want to talk about something. If you have twice as much money as I do, twice as much money, okay, and I have $5, how much you got? $10. Ten ooh, you guys are good at this. $10, okay. If you have twice as much money as I do, and I have $2, how much you got? $4. $4, okay, so you're getting it. If you have twice as much money as I do, and you, well, I got X, how much you got? You guys are good. So if I got X, you got 2X. Now, okay, I'm going to throw something in here. If you have three more than twice as much as I do, and I have $4, how much you got? <gasps> How'd you do that? You double it and add three. Okay, cool. Okay, you're significantly prepped for this next problem. Go for it. Read it. And read the red underlining as I read aloud. The length of one side of a parallelogram is three more than twice the length of the side adjacent to it. The perimeter of the parallelogram is 30 centimeters. Find the lengths of the two adjacent sides of the parallelogram. Okay. Do I know a specific value of length? Could I use an unknown? Okay, remember what you just did when I said I had $4 and y'all shouted out 11? <laughs> it's the same thing, except instead of 4, I got X. So how would I represent? If I've got a picture here of my parallelogram and I got one side is X, what would the other side be? I have some people mumbling. Go ahead, give it a try. What do you got? 2x plus 3. That's it. So we did the hardest part of this problem. We took our unknown and related it to what they asked us to do. Okay. Now we have to recognize that I am using perimeter. Okay. And I have a length x and a width 2x plus 3, I need to plug in. So now, with that said, I'm here, maybe. Boy, I threw that all over the place. And I'm going to take my perimeter, and I'm going to set it equal to 30. Where did I get 30? It's in my problem. Now, I want to explain perimeter. The perimeter formula, sometimes people are like, boom, why is it two times? If I start here and start walking on this, I've gone 2x plus 3. Then I've gone x more. 
But that's only halfway around. That's why we have to multiply it by 2. So I go 2x plus 3 more and x more. Okay, that's why there's two of them. And that's why that 2 exists in there. So now I have a choice. I'm going to solve. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of divide, you know, combine like terms there. But, you know, there is a choice here. I could distribute or I could just divide by 2 right off the bat. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 2 and get that going. And I'm going to say that that's equal to 15, maybe. There it is. Okay. So you guys go ahead and finish that out while I hand out your assignment. And then reread the question. See what you want to do with uh, answering that question. Well, thank you, dear. I don't have anything for you. I mean, do I need to give you a thank you note for this? Or you're good? Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I get little gifts in class. It's kind of fun. <laughs> okay. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm just handing out the assignments, and we'll get this other stuff going. Two, three, four, five. All right, so here we go. Uh, we got this going. I subtract 3. I got 3x equal 12. Divide by 3, and I got 4. Now, keep in mind, I ain't done. They ask in the problem, find the length of the two adjacent sides. Well, one of them is 4. The other one is, by happenstance, 11. <laughs> okay? Does it make sense? Okay, and we centimeters, so one side is four centimeters, the other one's 11 centimeters. Those are my sides. Okay, are we doing okay? Now, what I want to uh, talk about real quick, let's take out um, today's assignment that we are going to uh, grade. I'm just going to make sure you understand how to do each section, okay? I expect you to finish it. I will be collecting them. Okay, I'll be collecting them on the day of the quiz, all right, this next week. But it is a situation in which you will have used the assignments to prepare your note card to use on the quiz. I'm not going to let you use notes other than your note card because I want to make sure we're ready for this quiz. Okay, so here's the thing. I have in blue up here the equation I'd use to find this answer, okay? And number one, I have an n minus 2 times 180. That gives me the total interior angle value of my polygon. And two, find the measure of an exterior angle of each. Find the measure of an exterior angle. This is kind of big, an exterior angle. Because we yesterday I gave you a question, and you guys are like, dude, they're totally 360. If I add all the exterior angles together, it is a total of 360. If I have you find the measure of an exterior angle, that's different. Now, in three, find the measure of one interior angle of each regular polygon. Remember, this equation only works on regular polygons because all the angles must be the same, okay? All the angles must be the same interior-wise. Therefore, all the angles of the exterior must be the same. And sometimes when I do this problem, I go back and forth on the method I use to complete it. And when I talk about that, this is what I'm saying. And let me get a different color. This totally works. Totally works every time you do it. Okay? But remember, there's a relationship between interior and exterior angles. If I have an interior angle and I add it to the exterior angle, I get that they're 180 degrees because they're supplementary. Okay. I also know that there's a relationship between interior angles and exterior, excuse me, the number of sides and exterior angles. I could take the fact that the total of exterior angles is 360 and divide it by n, I get the exterior angle, 1, and n being the number of sides. In this particular case, if I take 360 and divide it by 15, what's I get? And some people are like, oh, how, how about 24? 
So I get 24 when I do that on this problem, and I'm using that relationship. If I take 24 and it's subtracted from 180, I will get 156. That's crazy that works that way. But I want you to keep in mind, the more you know about a topic, the more ways you might be able to approach that topic's solutions. So make sure you're starting to recognize those connections. Okay, so that's kind of a little added bonus on this one that I would use these two together to help you with that. Um, moving on. And four, the sum of the interior angle measures of polygon with n sides are given. Find n. Well, I've got to use the relationship that n minus 2 times 180. And then I know that's the sum. So I set it equal to sum, and I solve for n, okay, by dividing by 180 and getting it on from there, okay? So I can finish the equation and totally finding n, in this case, was 3 in this first one, okay? In 5, find the measure of an exterior angle of each regular polygon. 360 divided by n, the number of sides, is equal to exterior angle, okay? And 6, I can use the fact that 360 divided by the value of the exterior angle is equal to n. And if it goes in there evenly, there exists a regular polygon that has that exterior angle value, okay? And we'll find out how many sides. If it does not go in there evenly, it's not a regular polygon with that exterior angle value. But again, to find the exterior angle, or it should say, to use the exterior angle to find sides, I just go 360 divided by the exterior angle gives me the number of sides, okay? I can use the exterior angle to help me find the interior angle because the interior angle and the exterior angle are supplementary. And that's problems one through six as we go through. Now, if you're done, great. Compare with a row partner. If there's a discrepancy, I'll break the tie, okay? But I want you to keep the assignment until the day of the quiz, and that's when I'm collecting them, and I'm going to have you staple them together, okay? Because they're all due that day. But that does not mean you don't do them. You should do them throughout because you get to use them on your homework quizzes that will be graded and put in the grade book, okay? And it will be a random set of questions. I'm going to make 10 questions out of a... Uh, so you'll have to be able to answer two different quizzes, 20, be ready for 20 different questions on the stuff that I did on this. So it'll be super random. I'm going to love that, okay? Because 20 plus times 19 times 18 are the number of ways I can arrange those. So that'll be cool. Um, next page. Any needs for hints? Now, notice how I say hints and formulas. Any needs for hints in 7? And remember, the biggest one is I'm using n minus 2 times 180 to find the total sum. It finds my sum. And then after I find my sum, I can use that to find the missing value. Okay? In 8, exterior angles. Okay? Sum to 360. Okay? In C, start with Z, add those up, set it equal to 360, find the answer, plug it back in, find each separate exterior angle, and then find the interior angle, because you know the interior and exterior are supplementary. I do the same thing with B. B is even easier, because 3X, 4X, X, and 2X all add to B360. In A, I got to start here, because they're supplementary. Once I find the value of z, which is 70, I'm able to take that value with n minus 2 times 180. Remember, I put 4 in, minus 2, it's 2. 2 times 180 is 360. And I can find y based on the fact that my 70 plus 87 plus 100 plus y is equal to 360. And I can find my answer from there. In the bottom, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. I think I covered all the questions that people might have, but if you have one, please ask. Okay, but that is 
my hints on the assignment to make sure you're more successful. If you got follow-up questions, please do so during work time. Now, the next thing, I, I need to go over one more thing, and I gave you stuff. I need to talk about question seven and question nine, okay? Because people kind of like wheels of the bus fell off because we've done systems of equations by substitution, and people have a tendency to forget about that. So if we look at seven, my first relationship's A, E, E, C. My second relationship's D, E, E, B. And I've got those. So let's go A, E, which is 3X, equal Y, okay, E, C. And let's look at D, E, 4X, equal Y plus 1. And now, right now, people are like, oh, dude, you got two different variables. What's the deal? Did you notice that I have Y is equal to 3X? Okay, I either solve for one of the variables being nice to be plugged in for, or it's there already. And this one's there already. So where I see y, I'm going to pop in 3x in that relationship. So I got 4x equal, and I'm going to plus 1, and I'm just going to put in 3x. Oh, gosh darn. Where is that? Let's get the back there. Oh, wait, I was on the right thing. I just... I wasn't on the right thing. What did I do? Hey, let's do it this way. Okay, let's see what I'm doing. Where was I? It looks like I get rid of the page completely. There, it's back. Okay, no, that's not it. This isn't 6 1. That's 6 2. And I got rid of the page completely. Let's see if I can get back to that. 6 2, there it is. Not sure where it went. Okay. So I am going to plop in 3x. Subtract 3x, x is equal to 1. Okay, so I have by substitution, and then I combine like terms and solve. After I get that, i got to take that value of x, plug it back in. 3 times 1 is equal to y, so 4 is equal to y. So I have my answer, 1, 4. Okay, and I put it in a coordinate pair. Questions? Thank you, because, you know, it's my day. Okay, three, 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 said Bloom. You want to just kind of drive me home tonight? <laughs> I need a seeing eye person. All right, so we got that going. <laughs> All right, are you okay with one, three? Yeah, we're better. I, I like the face, by the way. I was like, I made a mistake someplace. All right, so here's the deal. Nine. Nine is done in a similar fashion. It looks a little harder at the beginning, okay? So when we're doing these, again, I got A, E, and E, C. Well, I got 2X equal Y. Oh, that ain't so bad. I thought that was the bad one. Oh, it's 10. Okay, let's not do nine. Nine, nine will be just like we did in seven. Let's do 10. I got 4x equal 5y minus 2. And then I've got 2x equal y plus 14. Now, I'm going to use a relationship here that I know of. And this might be really like hocus pocus, but remember, I can plug in y plus 14 wherever I see the value of 2x. It's the same thing. What? Two numbers multiply to be four. I got one and four, and I've got two and two, right? So couldn't I represent four as two times two x, five y minus two? Now I've got some folks going, why are you doing that? Well, okay, this is one way I can look at substitution. Are you in agreement that this is two x, and so is that? So couldn't I say, well, you know, where I see two x, I could put y plus 14 in? And it totally works, okay? So make sure you recognize that we can do those sorts of things. I could also, that's one way I could substitute. I could also solve for y and say, well, 2x minus 14 is equal to y. And where I see y, I can place in 2x minus 14, okay? I can do either one of those, okay? So I've got 4x equals 5 times... 2x minus 14 minus 2. And I solve that, and I plug in. So those are the two ways I can do things. 
I want you to keep in mind, you know how to do this. Just get them done, and you'll be good. And that's the last hints I've got for today. Thank you for your time. You guys have been fantastic. Okay.